last time we were looking at how you can attract insects generally into your garden and how you can um, make habitats for them. Um, so this time we're going to be focusing on bees and different types of bees need different things. So the first one we're going to look at is um, bumblebees and then the next one we'll look at is solitary bees. Um, so bumblebees, unlike honeybees, they live in quite small nests, so sort of up to about 200 individuals. So what happens is the queen bee um, will mate with a drone in the sort of late summer and then she'll hide in it over the winter and in the spring um, she'll look for a nest site and what they really like to nest in is old mouse holes um, in the ground so they're looking for holes in the ground with a nice chamber where they can lay their eggs they'll turn into the workers that will help them raise the queens and the drones for the following year so they're not as organised as honeybee nests um, they can be a bit of a mishmash but what they need is a nice dry chamber um, so you can buy bumblebee um, nesting houses or nesting hotels they tend to be quite big ceramic domes with a hole in the front um, but they're also quite an easy one to make at home for yourself and um, so I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So what you're going to need is a fairly large terracotta plant pot with a hole in the bottom. If it hasn't got holes you can always drill some so it needs to be well ventilated. Um, you're going to need a length of pipe so this is hose pipe. Ideally it needs to be about at least 18 millimetres in diameter and about 30 to 50 centimetres long. Um, you're going to need a little bit of chicken wire like this. You'll need some nesting material. So this is dried grass, but you could use hay or straw or even an old mouse nest because the bees are actually attracted to the smell of rodent nests, so the droppings. So even if you haven't got a mouse nest, if you've got any mouse droppings, um, you could always mix that in and that will help to attract them. Um, and then you need a lid to keep um, the inside of your nesting chamber dry. And you need some stones here to help with the ventilation. So what you need to do first of all, these need to be, obviously mouse nests are going to be mainly underground, so what you need to do is to give it a trench. Obviously I'm not going to do that here because I'm just on the table, but if you were doing it in your garden, you need to dig a shallow trench, and then you need to get your length of hose pipe. And what you need to do is pierce some holes along the bottom, because this is going to be sitting like this in the ground, and if the water goes in one end, what you don't want to do is have it to collect at the bottom, have nowhere to escape, and then your bumblebees won't be able to get in or out, or even worse, they'll drown. Um, so you need some drainage holes. I've actually cut a slit along the bottom of mine to allow the water to come out. So what you need to do is sort of lay that along your bit of a, a trench like this, with one end sticking out the ground, um, one end, and then the other end is going to go into sort of the, the trench where your bee hotel is going to be. So once you put that in the ground like that, you're going to get your bit of chicken wire, and you need to, and it's going to sit just inside your pot. So what you need to do is sort of bend the corners up so it will sit nicely in that pot. Just like that. So then you're going to place it sort of upside down at the end of where your hose pipe is in your trench. And this is obviously going to be where the bees are going to nest. And then if you get your bedding, so your dried grass or your straw, your hay or your mouse's nest, and sort of just sit it in that wire. And that's going to help keep it sort of nice and dry off the ground and nice and well ventilated. So your bee is going to come in this end, find that hole in the ground, you're going to travel along this tube into this nice dry chamber. So then what you can do is pop your flower pot over the top and your wire should just sit up inside it, like that. And then you're going to backfill your trench so that this is partially covered, so probably sort of up to there, and your pipe is going to be covered but obviously this end is going to be sticking out of the ground, like this also quite important to make sure that your hose pipe isn't being squashed because there's no point doing all of this if your bee can't get in so it might be worth propping the flap up a little bit so it's not sitting on the pipe and then once you've backfilled it so it's sort of down to there that's sort of a perfect chamber but you don't want the water to get in the top so what you need to do just get a few stones pop them on the top of your flower pot like this and then if you've got a a terracotta flower pot like this you might have the one of the trays that goes with it and these are perfect and you can just sit them on top the stones will make sure there's ventilation and then the air can get in and out but the water won't be able to so that just sits on top like that a cap if you haven't got a saucer you could use a bit of slate or maybe an old tile or anything that's going to stop the water from going in there really but allow the air to get in and out um so that's basically your bumblebee nesting chamber um it needs to be somewhere quite dry, but also quite shady. It doesn't want to be in full sun because they like somewhere nice and cool for their nests. Um, and the best thing really to do is once you've done this, don't keep disturbing it. It might take a couple of years before they go in there. But what might happen is you might actually get a mouse nesting in this chamber. And then the next year after that, 
the smell of the mouse might attract a bumblebee who can then come in. So you might need to leave it a couple of years for um, your bumblebee to come in, um, but that's a really good habitat for them. So that's how you can sort of make a habitat for bumblebees to nest in. Um, and then we'll look at how you can attract solitary bees and what to look out for in sort of the shop bought bee hotels and what mistakes to avoid. Okay.